where do I even start with London? It's one of those places that completely draw you in. People from all over the world, myself very much included, come here hoping to soak up all the culture, the history and the beauty, but all of it comes with a hefty price tag. And today I wanna to tell you all about how much the privilege of living in London really costs. Whether you've come here hoping to move to the British capital or you're just curious, no shame in that, you have come to the right place. I'm gonna start breaking it down by talking about my rent, which is the biggest expense that you're going to have. When I moved back to London one and a half years ago, I did what most people my age tend to do. I went onto a website called Spare Room where you can find flatmates and different houses and flats and I did just that. I found three housemates and together we rented a place in the London Borough of Southwark which is in southeast London and we rented a four bed house. We are in zone two which means we're quite close to central London. We have the overground nearby and loads of space. Now we're no longer straight out of uni so we were happy to splash out a little bit more than we might have been in the past. So my rent comes to 800 pounds a month. To give you a bit of an idea at what different kind of money brackets can get you. I've pulled a few examples. This first flat is in zone two, so relatively central, and you can get this room for 475 pounds a month with bills included. Next up is this more spacious two bed house in Stratford for 750. It's a bit further out, but it's an up and coming area, very well connected. It has the Olympic Park nearby and the Westfield Shopping Center. This third one is a studio in Peckham. It's in zone two and close to an overground station, but you can see that living alone is expensive at 1,000 pounds per month, and the place is really quite tiny. Final example, here's what paying 1,841 pounds per month could get you. It's a really beautiful modern house, but considering how much you're paying, you don't get a huge amount of space. So that's it, 800 pounds on rent, bearing in mind that you can pay a lot less and definitely, definitely a lot more. Next up, let's move on to bills and utilities. Number one, you've got water, which comes to about 10 pounds a month. Then you've got gas and electricity, that's about 10, yeah, 10 pounds a month as well. And then finally, you've got internet. For us, we pay 44 pounds a month for fiber optic virgin internet. This next expense is very UK and London specific, and that is council tax. Council tax is money you pay to your local council, I know, right? In order to provide vital services like taking out the bins and uh, funding libraries, keeping the streets nice and tidy. On the government website, if you type in your address, you will be able to see how much you pay and also how much other people on your street pay. And this depends on the value of the property. Another very British custom is paying for a TV license. Anyone that owns a TV in the entire land has to pay this fee. And the fee comes to 159 pounds a year, which I think is pretty steep. And finally, the one thing that we pay pay for here at home that is a bit of a luxury. We have a cleaner that comes in every fortnight. Although that sounds like a really indulgent thing, it comes to 25 pounds per person per month. So to me, that is totally worth it. But there are financial benefits to living in the UK as well. Chief among them, the NHS. You don't have to pay for private healthcare on a monthly basis. The state takes care of it for you. Now, there are things that are taken, things being money here, <laughs> that are taken out of your paycheck every month. But once that is taken care of, you don't even get the money so you don't feel like you're parting with it. That's it. You do have to pay extra for dentist appointments and stuff like that. But on the whole, it is very affordable, very well managed and we love the NHS here. All those expenses come to 95 pounds a month. And don't worry, we are just getting started because our next category is subscriptions. None of these are directly related to living in London, but they are the kinds of expenses that people with a lifestyle that's similar to mine tend to have. Number one, I pay 10 pounds to Voxy. They're my phone provider. I get, I don't even know, six gigabytes of internet or something like that. It's a, it's a pretty sweet deal. Next up, we've got Lightroom. Now, this is quite a lot of money. I pay 10 pounds for it on a monthly basis, but I use it to edit my photos for my Instagram, which by the way, you should totally follow. Epidemic Sound, again, this is very me specific. It is a big library of royalty-free music, which I use on my videos. You probably... Beautiful, isn't it? Worth every penny. Next up, we've got email hosting. Again, very specific to me. I pay £4.60 for this. It's called the Google Suite. Next up, we've got two 
wildly unnecessary ones, but a lot of us probably have them, and that is A, a Netflix subscription, which in the UK costs £9.99, and then a Spotify subscription, which costs £8.99. These prices, by the way, vary based on where you are. So for example, my parents in the Czech Republic pay a lot less money than me. Um, what I'm saying here is if you have a card and an address in another country, maybe think about it, okay? I'm not saying, I'm just saying. Three more left. I've got website hosting, which costs me £7.20 every month. Again, a very me expense. Then we've got iCloud, which um, I just paid to boost my storage to 200 gigabytes, and that costs me £2.49. And finally, something that for me is like a really nice to have that I could drop if I had to is online language classes. I take classes on a website called italki. It is super useful. I've mentioned it in basically all my language videos. I have left a discount link in the description below if you want to check it out. One more that I should mention that I'm not paying for currently, but I hopefully will once we're out of lockdown is the gym. So I used to go to a local gym that is actually extremely affordable and it costs £22.99, which is kind of wild, especially in London. My subscriptions come to £85.27 every month, which frankly isn't great. So maybe doing this video is going to be really good for me. Maybe it's going to force me to reevaluate my budget. In fact, I already am, and I feel terrible. Our next category is travel, and this has obviously been deeply impacted by all the lockdowns we've had over the past year, but on a regular basis and the life I hope we'll return to someday, I would buy something called a monthly travel card. I typically get a zone one, two, three travel card and that costs 167 pounds and 10 pence. So it is not cheap. And if you do want to lessen the burden of traveling on public transport, one thing you can do is stick with buses. Now it will require a lot more time and a lot more patience because they tend to have a fair few delays, but here is the math. If you travel by bus only, you will pay four pounds and 65 pence per day, which adds up to 87 pounds and 60 pence per month. Now, if you have a car, we're moving on to the opposite side of the spectrum, that will cost you a lot of money. And I'm not just talking about the upkeep and the insurance and the gas, I'm talking about physically going into central London. We have something called the congestion charge and it adds up to 15 pounds per day. Our next category is a big one, food. Now I say it's big not because it necessarily needs to cost a lot of money, but because there's so much variability. For example, some people will be very content just getting the basics, cooking at home, and that's it. And that way you can save a ton of money. But if you're uh, like, me, for example, sadly, you might end up spending a lot of money on this. I have put together all of my shopping for the past month. The total sum was 122 pounds and 52 pence, and that's just on groceries. I then proceeded to add up my takeaways, and obviously currently I'm not eating out in restaurants, but if we weren't in lockdown, I suspect I would be spending even more because when you go out to a restaurant, you might get a bottle of wine, etc. We all know how it is. I spent 87 pounds and 70 pence on takeaways last month. And I should point out here that it was February, which is a much shorter month. So I don't even, <sighs> that brings us to a grand total of 210 pounds and 22 pence for food, which yeah, is not great, but it is what it is. When in lockdown, sometimes you just get to treat yourself. And um, I do want to point out here that obviously your bill for food can be just so much lower. It could literally be half that if you really, really stuck to a budget. Okay, we're gonna talk about salaries and how affordable London really is vis-a-vis -vis how much you make in a bit. But before that, I wanna finish with my last category, which is just other. There are these random expenses that you have on a monthly basis. They can be clothes, they can be, I don't know, medicine or skincare. The grand total was 76 pounds and 44 pence for my other spending. Okay, and now the moment we've all been waiting for, the grand total. I don't really want a drum roll for this, but let's have one for dramatic effects. My, my hands are sweaty. I mean, this is gonna be terrible. The grand total is, it's 1,434 pounds and one pence. Oh dear, that's, yeah. Now as a standalone figure that 
looks scary, but it doesn't really mean much. We need to compare it to a base salary. And in order to do that, I have prepared three different salary levels to compare the sum to. Number one, I want to start with the average London salary. Glassdoor thinks that the average salary in London is £40,732. Let's have a look at how much that leaves us with on a monthly basis after tax. I just type the numbers in here and here's our figure, £2,612 every month after tax. And now for the fun bit, let's subtract my monthly spending from this figure. What we are left with is £1,178, which frankly is pretty promising. That to me doesn't look bad at all. You still have plenty left over for savings, which I think is something that's very, very important. You always want to have an emergency fund in case the world goes bonkers like it just did. But there are many, many, many people in London working for minimum wage. The London living wage at the moment is £10.85. Let's say we times that by 35, which can be the average work week for somebody who is working on that wage we get to a grand total of 19,747 per year. This annual salary will leave us with 1,422 pounds per month after tax. Let's take my spending figure and subtract it. And look what we're left with. We're left with a deficit of 12 pounds and three pence. Now, of course, if that was your annual salary, you would adjust your spending habits and you would cut out a lot of the luxuries. However, let's bear in mind the fact that I am single and I don't have children. There are so many single parents out there who do have to make this money stretch, not just for themselves, but for other people they are supporting. So yes, it can be difficult to live in London. For our final salary scenario, let's look at a different source. Here they listed the average salary for women aged 22 to 29, which is the bracket I fall into. Based on this scenario, we would go home with 1,704 pounds every month after tax. And when we subtract my spending, we are left with 269 pounds and 97 pence. There are a lot of people in London in their late 20s, early 30s that are covering their bills every month, but struggling to save money. So that is definitely something to bear in mind if you are thinking of moving to London. Another thing to bear in mind is that, yes, renting can seem affordable, but buying is damn near impossible for anyone our age, which makes us very different from the previous generation. And there you have it. This is how much living in London costs me on a monthly basis. Obviously, these figures will vary month to month. If you have any other questions about living in London, do let me know and I might make a video answering them. Thanks for watching and I put out new videos every Friday, so see you then. Subscribe.